All right. Uh, good afternoon, class. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I slept a whole lot last night and woke up super late, so I feel pretty groggy, actually. I'm drinking some coffee. Um, so here's my coffee mug I thought I'd show you. Got a brown Boston Terrier on one side, got a black Boston Terrier on the other, so this is a perfect coffee mug for me. Um, I thought I would show you this as well. This was the dog toy that my mom got my dogs for Christmas, and I think she doesn't know about emojis, so this is it. Um, <laughs> kind of funny. She doesn't know what that emoji means. Check out the face on that. It's pretty cool. It's got a mustache. All right. So um, let's get right into the physics. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is um, basically the equation E equals MC squared. Okay, so um, what this equation says is that mass can be converted into energy. Energy can be converted into mass. So basically energy and mass are the same thing. Um, if I give you energy, you actually have more mass than you did before, okay? So they're the same thing. Um, and actually what this means is that because the speed of, C is the speed of light here, because the speed of light is so large, um, that means that a small amount of mass is actually converted into a huge amount of energy. So for example, um, what if we were to convert a human being into um, pure energy? So we were to take all that mass of the person and just completely turn it into energy. Well, um, let's say the mass of the person is approximately 50 kilograms. All right. Then that would mean the energy we would get from turning that person into energy would be 50 times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th, squared. So that's 9 times 10 to the 16th. Um, times 50. So that's um, 4.5 times 10 to the 18th joules. That's a lot of energy. Um, that would be of the order of the amount of energy required to power a city for, for one year. Okay. So it's a lot of energy. Um, now, when we're talking about things like elementary particles, um, when we're talking about things like nuclei, elementary particles, things of that nature, it doesn't really make sense to um, to get things of that. And um, one atomic mass unit is equal to one twelfth the mass of uh, a uh, carbon-12 atom, okay? Um, so this is kind of a weird definition, but you have to make a definition, or er, this should be nucleus, my bad, not an atom. So 
it doesn't include the, the electrons, not one twelfth of the electron mass as well. It's just the nucleus of carbon-12. Um, so why do we have to do this weird definition? It's because, you know, you might say, well, isn't that just the mass of a neutron or just the mass of a proton? Well, yes, it is approximately, but you have to remember um, there, there's a potential energy associated with a bunch of nucleons together and energy is the same thing as mass so when you when you put nucleons together the mass of the nucleons together is different from the mass of the nucleons separate because of the fact that there's a, a potential energy which is the same thing as mass so that's pretty crazy to just wrap your head around, is, is that when you put things together, they have a different mass from when they're apart, okay? So that's why we have this weird definition. We can't just say one AMU is the mass of a proton. So if you work this out in terms of um, grams, this is 1.66 times 10 to the um, minus 24 grams or 10 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, okay? Um, written in terms of AMUs, atomic mass units, the mass of the proton is equal to 1.007277 atomic mass units. So that's something you should write down. It's also in your textbook. But um, the mass of a neutron is 1.008665 atomic mass units. All right. So the, the neutron is actually slightly heavier than the proton. Why is that? Well, it's because um, the neutron has slightly... Um, as we're going to learn later on this week, the neutron is actually made up. The neutron is not an elementary particle. It's made up out of things called quarks. And the quarks have a, a potential energy which affects the mass. Okay, And it's a different amount of potential energy from a proton. The mass of an electron, which is also known as a uh, beta minus is 0 0.00548 atomic mass units. Okay. Um, I a really easy way to remember the mass of an electron is to remember that it's approximately the mass of a proton divided by 2,000. Um, electrons have about one two thousandth the mass of a proton. All right, so this is the AMU. So this equation, E equals mc squared, only works if the energy ex is expressed in joules and the mass is expressed in kilograms. Um, so if we write this in terms of... Um, of atomic mass units, we have a different conversion. Um, so it actually turns out that um, one U of mass, one atomic mass unit, is equivalent to 931.5 mega electron. So 1U is 931.5 million electron volts. So again, we could convert atomic mass units to joules, but like I said, joule is not the appropriate unit for energy when we're talking about elementary particles. It's just too large of a unit. Um, we want to talk about electron volts, or in this case, millions of electron volts. Okay, 
So electron volts are the unit that is appropriate for atomic processes and nuclear processes. Um, okay, so this is E equals mc squared when we talk about um, when we talk about uh, nuclei. All right, so there's this thing. So this is your main equation. Um, so there's this thing called mass defect. Not mass effect, but mass defect. Um, by the way, mass effect is my favorite video game. Um, comment in the live stream if, if you've uh, played mass effect before. It's a pretty sweet video game. If you haven't played it before, it might be something to do during the, the shutdown. So mass defect is equal um, to the mass. By the way, mass defect is denoted by delta m. And so delta m is equal to the mass Um, so mass defect is the mass of the separated nucleus minus the mass of the formed nucleus. Okay, and so if you think about it, if I have a formed nucleus that is stable, that means it, it's stable, so it means it doesn't want to break apart. If I add energy to it to break the nucleus apart into protons and, um, and neutrons, I've added energy to the system, um, and so therefore I've added mass to the system. So if you have something stable, the mass of the separated nucleus is actually going to be greater than the mass of the formed nucleus, because the nucleus would rather be together than apart. So this will be greater than zero for, for stable things. And so this is, this is of course, a relative thing. All right, so um, let's go ahead and we're going to do an example here. Um, and we're going to compute, we're going to consider plutonium-238. Plutonium has um, atomic number 94 and mass number 238. So that means that there are 94 protons, okay, and then there are um, 238 minus 94, let me see if I can remember how to do subtraction here, 4, um, 4, so that's what, 144 neutrons. Okay, so let's compute delta M for plutonium-94. Now plutonium, if you don't know about plutonium, it's unstable, so I would probably expect this to be less than zero because plutonium wants to fall apart. Um, but it could still be greater than zero. It's It just means that there are other things with a... Um, that are more stable, okay? All right, so what is the mass of the separated plutonium nucleus? Well, that's gonna be, it's gonna have 94 protons, and I know that the protons have 
a mass. So if, if you look on the, the other page of this notes, I gave you that mass. Um, so the mass of a proton all by itself is 1.007277 atomic mass units. Um, the mass of a um, of 144 neutrons would be 144 times 1.008665 u. So this is the mass of the separated plutonium nucleus. Now we want to subtract from that the mass of the formed nucleus. That is something that you would look up. And in fact, I found it in my nuclear engineering textbook. It told me what the mass of the formed uh, plutonium-238 is. And I have it written down here. It is 237.998068 U. So I looked it up. So we can do that and we can calculate the mass defect. So um, pause for calculator. And I got um, plus 1.933934 U. So it's a positive number. So what does that mean? Does that mean that plutonium is stable? No, not necessarily. It just might mean... So there might be something with a larger mass defect that is even more stable, okay? All right, so maybe I should just say um, maybe it's bigger for stable things, okay? Um, so there is something called the binding energy of a nucleus, which is equal to delta M converted to energy. Okay, and basically what this is, is this is equal to the energy required to blast the nucleus apart. All right, it's the energy required to blast the nucleus apart. Um, so let's go ahead and calculate what is the binding energy of the plutonium 94, 238, excuse me. Well, I take that 1.934 U and I need to convert that to energy. So if I look on the page over here, I can see that 931.5 mega electron volts is what you get from one U. By the way, if you want to sound hip like a physicist, um, you can call this a MEV. Okay. So one U converts to 931.5 MEVs. So doing that calculation, I get uh, 1,801 MEVs, okay? So that means that um, it would take 1,801 MEVs of energy to completely blast the plutonium nucleus apart, okay? Um, there's another thing 
it's called the binding energy per nucleon. Okay, and it is equal to the binding energy divided by the number of nucleons, which is A. All right, and you could think of this as sort of a pound for pound stability. Okay, you know, kind of like you know, obviously, if, if I always think about boxing when I think about binding energy per nucleon, right? You have the the heaviest boxers obviously are going to have the most force to their punch, but really, what matters, you know, boxers have different weight classes, right? So it's within your weight class who can punch the hardest. All right, so it's like pound for pound stability. Um, so. Let's go ahead and calculate binding energy per nucleon for um, the plutonium-238. Well, it has 238 uh, nucleons. So I take 1801 mevs, and I divide it by the number of nucleons, which is 238. Um, doing that on my calculator, I get uh, 7.57 mevs per nucleon. So that's the binding energy per, per nucleon. Um, I'm going to attempt to show you a graph here. So let me see if it comes up. Oh, yeah. All right. So this is a graph right here of binding energy per nucleon versus, oh, you can't see the whole thing. Let me scroll a little bit. Uh, binding energy per nucleon versus mass number. And uh, you can see that the binding energy per nucleon of iron is the largest. So what that means is that iron is the most stable nucleus. Okay? So uh, things that are um, so iron is the most stable nucleus. You can see that um, which is called fusion. Okay? So um, so at any rate this is something that's kind of interesting. If we think about stars, stars, gosh darn it, stars are made up mostly out of hydrogen and helium. Now, hydrogen and helium has a very low mass number. That's less than iron. So stars become more stable by fusing hydrogen together and helium together to make larger mass numbers. Okay, um, but that can only happen until you get to iron. So stars can only fuse elements up to iron. So once a star, so basically what stars are doing is they're turning hydrogen into iron over time. So, um, you know, basically a, a star can only make up to iron. Everything else, all the other heavier elements in the universe, gold, silver, etc., those can only be made in supernova explosions. So if you have anything on your body that is made out of gold or silver, you can rest assured that that was made during a supernova explosion um, sometime in the past. So that's kind of cool. So that's the thought I will leave you with. Um, have a nice day.